she is not the mission. Welcome. Here we go. You are the mission, not her. Your woman is not your mission. We're getting back to basics, gentlemen. That's right. Getting right back to it. We're going to chop it up today on 101. You are the mission. As responsible men that care deeply for all women, me included, you get concerned about, you know, wanting to help the women, the men, make them all happy, right? All happy. It's impossible because she is not the mission. You are the mission. She will only come along if the ride is adventuresome, it's exciting, scary, yet secure all at once. How can a man do all of this for you? Listen carefully, and you will never get punitized. Listen to R.P. Thor. Avoid punitization. There are sacred commandments of poon that will allow you to never become punitized. These are sacred commandments. And they will serve you well as a man in your relationship. So the rules of command. So it was always um, never say I love you first if you're the man. Does Do you understand why that is so critical when you're forming a relationship? The very, very basic understanding that I have of it is you just gave up all your power in the relationship. Yeah, you gave up the frame in the relationship. And the cardinal rule in the relationship as written by Rolo Tomasi is uh, he who has the most power needs the other the least. And knowing what we know about female psychology in the field, which is actually how it works, not in the theory and what is written about, is that that, that little bit of, of lack puts her in a, 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 a position of deference, wanting, so to speak, or wanting to follow. Because she now feels, if she feels a love for you and wants to express that to you, that puts you in a position to create a frame, which is your identity, and how she can operate within your identity, essentially. When that happens, the relationship becomes very, very effortless because she knows how to behave and how to act. It's pretty amazing when you've experienced this yourself. It's hard to explain. A lot of people try to. They're going to say, never say I love you first. Yes, because you give the power away. And the problem is women have the paradox of choice. They have a bag of dicks at their disposal. Well, it's called a box of dicks, and it looks exactly like this today, like this imperial probe droid. Okay? So with that in mind, you she has to have an investment in you. And therefore, the investment has to come from her. She's not the only one. Once you realize she's not the only one, and she... None of them ever can be. It's really, really interesting because when they invest by saying that they love you, remember, women love opportunistically. She's telling you that she has this opportunity that she wants to capitalize on. This gives you all the framework to create exactly what you want in the relationship. That's why that is the first rule. And it's uh, been great. Very well written. You know what? Thank you, man. I, honestly, I'm not a writer. And... <laughs> It's, a, it's been it actually has been a really long time coming because it, it's a funny thing it started out so differently it started out with really my story on what happened to me uh when when i was 28 years old and i got hung up in 12,000 volts and nearly killed myself yeah. and blew my hands uh and face off practically um and how i recovered from it, it started that way and because of my involvement with the apprentices i started counseling or coaching young men on basic life issues and with a really couple of really good relationships that i had with women people wanted to know how did we do it and it kind of evolved from there number two number two was make her jealous 
right? That was the second commandment of Poon. Great game. Yes. Now, I will tell you this. Jealousy is a funny emotion. In men, it can lead to violence. It's a crazy thing. In women, it can too. It can go crazy. But there's a part of jealousy that hits the same parts of the brain. You can look this up. That also gets them very excited. It runs parallel to that excitement and that tingle. You ever hear girls say they had the tingles? I mean, guys in our space call it the V tingles, right? The Gina tingles. Yeah, the Gina tingles. Yeah, it's a strange thing. It's real. And girls can't explain it. When I talk about a dominant masculine presence, you're giving it off when you have that all the time. It's called a vibe too. But the jealousy thing seems to excite that tingle a lot. You, you ever hear the term that women want men that other women want? That all the other women want? Yes. And it's evidenced even in these dating platforms and even through famous men. They all want the same ones. They all want Chris Hemsworth and uh, Jason Momoa. Yeah, no doubt about it. That one's a, a tricky one. I think we can, we can explore that a little bit. Women will never admit it, but jealousy excites them in a sexual way. I'll say it again. Women are sexually aroused, even though they would deny it, by jealousy. In particularly, probably the highest level of it is when a woman is flirting with you and you are just kind of plausibly denying that flirt or game. One of the statements in the rules that he wrote was the thought of you turning on another woman will actually arouse her sexually. I have way too much evidence of this outside of me where I could pick from many YouTubes and actually within my entire life, this seems to be something that's deniable. It has to have plausible deniability with women, but in actuality, when we talk about human intersexual dynamics and female psychology as practical in the field, this exists in spades. Uh, no girl wants a man that no other woman wants. So this is a huge component of their ability to screen for mates, whether short-term or long-term. This is a big, big deal. This fits both into dualistic mating strategy and into mate switching strategy, which I am not convinced there is a mate switching strategy. I think it's a variant on the dual mating strategy, particularly as women age. There is something we might be missing, but it's more additive than a separate and complete theory. I'm just, I don't see it. You know, one study opposed to 50 doesn't upset the 50 studies you know there's how we get to the third one this is the one i wanted to talk about the most today and this is the title you shall make you shall make your mission yours not your woman your priority so this is the quote from the third commandment of upon forget all those romantic cliches of leading man proclaiming his undying love for the woman who completes him, much like Steve Harvey's soulmate. Look where he's at. Back to the commandment. Despite whatever protestations to the contrary, women do not want to be the one or the center of a man's existence. That is one of the scariest places to ever be if you're the sole reason for his existence, which many men go down that road thinking they're honoring that woman are actually absolutely disrespecting and destroying her ability to have a good relationship. I, um, I appreciate you all coming to the Dragon Ship. Thank you, AJ. I look forward to chatting with you after for a few minutes, but we'll go yeah. ahead and close it out today. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. And let's do it. And guys, go get the book, man. Go to my website at Become Durable. Give me your email. Go get the free book. There's a code. There's a code in the description. Okay? A free a free DMP or Rule Zero Fan. And you get a free chapter. And it's a good chapter. Skull. Masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. Now available on Amazon. Masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis. Pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. 
A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant masculine presence.